the long-awaited attempt of us to recreate a Skyrim mead. Today, we make Black Briar Mead. So we actually got this cookbook for Christmas, I think it was, a while back. This is the Elder Scroll, the official cookbook for Skyrim, Morrowind, and Across Tamarill. I'm probably pronouncing those all wrong. Terribly sorry. However, it's a really interesting cookbook. And in the back, they have their drinks. And they start off with a section that they call Quick Meads. Do you want to talk a little bit about what they're... Sure, and this is why we haven't done this video yet. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with much of what they have to say, so let me go through this. First... Before Brian gets into there, he disagrees, but he understands. Yeah, oh, I know why they do some of what they do. Some of it is just what people have done for a long time doesn't make it right. It just means that's what people have done. They start off with pour it into a, they make half gallon batches, by the way, which is totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. They say, bring, bring water to a boil, then boil, pour the boiling water over the honey and stir until the honey has dissolved. Okay. Now, back in the day, people did that because their water was no good. Okay. They boiled the water to sterilize the water. There's nothing wrong with the honey. There's no reason to abuse your honey like that. Boiling honey, unless you're making a boche, which is a whole different thing, is not necessary. In fact, it's harmful. It can kill off some of the subtler flavors, things like that. Now, how much does it really hurt it? That's debatable, but to me, why even do it if there's just absolutely no need to? Now, if you're using really crappy sewer water, get better water. For real. Okay, just use like bottled spring water or something. You really shouldn't. If your tap water smells like the local swimming pool, you probably don't want to use that either. You want to use something that's really good to drink, okay? If you like drinking that water, that's water you should use for brewing, okay? So avoid distilled water because it doesn't have any of the minerals and stuff in it. Not the best thing to brew with, but it is better than using crappy sewer water, just saying. Anyway, then they say to let the mixture cool to room temperature, then add the yeast. Okay, that's smart, but it doesn't even have to cool totally to room temperature. Just below, like, say, 110 Fahrenheit is fine. Room temperature is, like, 70s, so that's that's a lot different. And room temperature changes depending on where you are in the world, so kind of ambiguous, It is too. really important to let that mixture cool before adding your yeast, because if you pitch yeast into a brew that's too hot, you're going to kill your yeast. Oh, yeah. Then fix a brewing airlock to the top of the jug and set a moderately warm place to begin fermenting. Yay, Yay! them! They told people to use an airlock! I'm fairly certain that back in um, the time that this game takes place, they probably didn't have such things, but it's okay because they still told you to do it. Now, then they go on to explain what to expect. After a day or so, you should see bubbles rising to the surface. Let it ferment to a week. Let it ferment for a week, then taste. They don't say what to do. But they just say at the two-week mark, the alcohol by volume will be low, somewhat less than a light beer. This is a great time to strain out the extra ingredients and start enjoying the mead. Now, let me analyze that for just a moment. They're saying at two weeks, the alcohol by volume should be low. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about their recipe. Their recipe is two cups of honey, which comes to about a pound and a half in a half gallon, which if you did that in a gallon would be like three pounds, which is a 1.105 or so specific gravity. After two weeks, if it's like a light beer at only 4%, you got like a 1.070 specific gravity. People say that we used to like our stuff sweet, but wow, that's super uber sweet. You're drinking honey water with this much alcohol. On the other hand, if it actually fermented like it's supposed to, which it probably would, because there's nothing really wrong with this recipe, um, it would be something more like 10 to 13 percent, so it's not like a light beer. So they're kind of off base on that, and that's just, I believe, whoever wrote this doesn't make mead. They don't ferment. They just write books, okay? There's a difference. Please don't take this wrong. I'm not making fun of this book. I'm pointing out why I really didn't want to make this mead, and I'm going to point out what we're going to do to make it work our way, okay? So that's just something that we're doing. Um, then it says, the meads are designed to be enjoyed while they're fairly young, still cloudy, and a bit of fizz to them. Okay, the fizz is carbonation, and that's the natural carbonation of the gases from fermentation. I personally feel that degassing improves that brew, okay? Some people like to drink them that way and carbonate it, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I believe the flavor is going to be improved if you do degas them. Drinking them young, I don't really have a problem with, but 
when it's that young, that's why they keep it so sweet, so that it actually tastes kind of good. Now, I also know that way back in the day, people made meads this way, and it was totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That is their basic mead. Now onto the Blackbriar mead. We're going to start with that one, because that's the one that we're actually going to work on today. I think it's just the next page. Blackbriar mead. All right. This one comes with six ounces of crushed blackberries. Six ounces. Now, that's probably for a half gallon, so that'd be 12 ounces in a full gallon. Well, I didn't want to do six ounces. I'm doing a pound of blackberries. And we're using fresh blackberries. We're going to put them in a bag and crush them up. One to two tablespoons of dried rose hips. That's not very much. I'm going to use a quarter cup, so I'm doubling that amount, which is basically the right amount for a full gallon if I double their recipe. Half teaspoon of ground cloves. Half teaspoon of ground cloves in a half gallon is way overpowering in my opinion. So I'm going to use one whole clove in the whole gallon, okay, just to make life a lot simpler. And a dash of salt. I'm not putting salt into my brew. It's there just because it should add a salty flavor, but salt kills fermentations. You forget cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon stick. They call for one cinnamon stick. We're not going to use one. We're going to use two. I like cinnamon, and people ask all the time, is it real cinnamon or is it cassia? It's cassia. Okay, just, just so you're aware. So it's the hotter, uh, more aggressive style of cinnamon. It's not the very, the very light and sweet. If it was the very light and sweet, I might even use three sticks because it's just not gonna have the same punch. Um, normally in America, I could be wrong, but normally in America, when you're buying cinnamon, you're buying cassia, even the ground stuff. It's probably cassia. If you see Ceylon cinnamon or something like that, then it is real cinnamon, um, just something of note. But anyway, we have honey. Oh, you have three pounds of honey. Already pre-mixed. This is wildflower honey because we felt that that would be a nice neutral honey to go with our berries and they actually suggested using wildflower honey in their recipes so we're sticking with that. And this happens to have come from Bevy's Honeybees so it's a really high quality honey but use the honey that you can get. Use the best stuff that you can find. If it happens to be wildflower use that. If it's clover use that. If it happens to be like an orange blossom or something use that. I don't see any of those clashing with blackberries so Use the best honey you can come up with and just make it happen. I would suggest staying away from the more stronger, unusually flavored oh, yeah. honeys. Exotics. Like buckwheat or uh, avocado. Don't, don't use avocado don't use honey those. in mead at all would be a good thing. <laughs> just say it. But in this mead in particular, you want something neutral or you want something that's going to go good with blackberries. Now the one thing that we're going to be adding that they don't do is yeast nutrient. and. Well, it's not probably 100% necessary because we do have the blackberries in there and they're whole berries, so they have all the seeds and all the skins and everything. But um, I just feel like, you know, honey, mead, eh, yeah, any fermentation, I'm starting to like to use fermato in them. Just two grams and a little bit of water. If you can't get that, yeast hulls are okay. Um, if you can't get that, boil up a little bit of bread yeast in some water. It's Or bake it in the oven. Yeah, or bake it in the oven. It's not exactly the same. There's not the same nitrogen content, but you know, Fermato is pretty cheap. It's easy to get. It's organic. We like it. Just do that. It's so much simpler. So now that we have our three pounds of wildflower honey in here, we're going to go ahead and add some water so we can start the dilution process of this honey. Let's go halfway. This water is warm. I would say it's probably like blood temperature, maybe even a little above that, because um, room temperature is much too ambiguous of a number. But most of our blood it runs about 98 to 99 degrees. So, you know, pretty much that's a, that's a given. If your blood runs colder than that, well, make it warmer than your blood. I do, however, need a utensil for mixing. So for that, I would like my spoon of unusual size. All right, and I'm just going to mix it up. Now, this is an advantage and a disadvantage of the Little Big Mouth Bubbler. It has a very large opening, so I can get in there and do this and swirl it around and make a mess and splash and get all the oxygen in, because you want oxygen in it in the beginning. Yeah, oxygen in it, wow, that's just, that's a big long word. Anyway, um, you want oxygen there to help the yeast build up a colony. Without that, you can get some sulfur smells and off flavors and, well, just general nasty smells that people talk about when they talk about fermentations. We don't get those. Why? Because I splash this stuff, okay? Look at the, I'm splashing. Derica usually ends up cleaning her glasses afterwards because there's honey water stuck to them. Once fermentation has taken hold and there's some alcohol is when you don't want to add any more oxygen, but that's another video. Already, this is smelling so fantastic. And that's because Bevy's Bees, their honey is just, 
it's a really, really good honey. And you can smell the floral bouquet on this particular yes. honey. It's Bevy is lovely. actually a sponsor of the show. Yes. We just do have to say that. <laughs> um, this honey was given as part of her sponsorship. Um, but other than that, she doesn't actually pay us directly to say nice things. We like her. She's a cool person. She handles her bees in probably the most natural, holistic way you possibly can. And you know, the bees reward her for it. Her honey is some of the best honey I've ever experienced. So um, she is trying to find ways to be able to sell it to people. As I understand, there'll be a link in the description below. At this point, you want to make sure that you mix it up good, okay? It's not that the yeast won't get to the honey, because we know they will. It's more, I want to get a more accurate reading in the beginning. So that's why I want this all mixed up. Plus, the more aeration I can give it, the better. If you want to, you can get out your drill and put the paddle attachment on or cut this down or whatever you want to do and just go and get it all done that way. Or if you're making a larger batch, you can totally do that. By the way, this recipe just scales up. Multiply everything by three or by five if you're making three gallons or five gallons respectively. All right, to that, I'm going to add our yeast nutrient, which is pretty well dissolved at this point. It usually comes out a little clumpy. Let it sit for five or 10 minutes in water and it, it dissolves pretty well. So I'm just going to pour that right in. I am also going to add our cinnamon sticks. Do you want those in the brew bag or you want them separate so we can remove them first? I was going to put them in now. Okay, because I was just wondering oh, if you put them in the brew bag. Oh, they'll probably end up... Hmm. We're going to put them in the brew bag, actually, because I think everything will get removed all at the same time. They don't specify a time other than two weeks. So I'm guessing in about two to three weeks, we're going to be able to rack this, which gives me the, the idea that that's about how long it'll be in there. But if I decide to just remove the bag of berries and it's not in there, now it's still in there and it could over extract. So we're going to put it in with the berries. Therefore, it can be removed if needed, which means we're going to do the berries next. Okay, so I got us a fermentation bag and I've put a fermentation weight inside said bag. Brian will show you the weight here in a moment. If I can find it. Find it. <laughs> here it is. Just a piece of glass. And it's all been sanitized. Yeah, they're typically used for making pickles or kimchi or anything like that. Uh, but they're glass, so like Brian said, you can sanitize them, which is a perfect thing to put in to weigh down your bag. And I have our blueberries. No, our blackberries. Blackberries, not blueberries. These are blackberries. Now, ideally, I wanted to freeze these and then be thawed to put in here. These happen to be fresh, so if you're in a pickle, <laughs> and you have to use fresh, use fresh, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But frozen is perfectly acceptable as well. Um, the only difference is you're gonna wanna mash up the fresh ones a little bit more because the cell walls have to be broken. So for that, I have a sanitized potato masher. Now you wanna be careful because you're in glass. You don't wanna scrape anything. And you also got your last weight in there. Yeah, so, so I just wanna kinda gently do this. You can throw them through the blender if you really want to. I didn't find a need. So I'm just giving these a quick mash. It's not even really necessary to do because they'll they'll break down. They'll the, the yeast will get to them. Um, this just gives it a little bit more help. And you can see it's already working. The color is changing drastically. Plus, I mean, they're blackberries. It's not like they take a whole lot of pressure to break up. You know, you do want to be careful that you don't break your bag, though. That's kind of important too. All right. That's enough. I don't really think I need to do much more than that, so let's do it. Now what I want to do is rinse down the mash into there. I'm going to tie this bag off. Do you want to put your spices in first? Oh yeah, I want to put the spices in first. See, this is why there's two of us. So we're going to add our two cinnamon sticks. We're going to add our one clove spice. You know, now that I'm really thinking about it, I think I'm going to add two cloves. That's right, living dangerously. Well. I thought about it, and we've used two and three cloves in a brew before, and they're calling for half a teaspoon in a half gallon. That'd be a teaspoon in a full gallon. Two of these is not a teaspoon. Okay. So I'm guessing that they expect it to be a... So I'm guessing that they expect it to be a strong flavor component, and I, I was thinking about that, that I, I think we might be straying too far from the original intent. So. Right. Uh, and now we're going to put the rose hips in. Oh yeah, rose hips too. Now these, we've had these for a while. Didn't really know what to do with them. They're just these weird little things and I don't, I still don't know what to do with them, but I'm gonna just throw a bunch of them in here. 
Okay, there's a story behind this. We had a rose mead that we tried making. The rotomel. The rotomel. And uh, we were using rose hips in it originally. And um, Brian is not a patient man. No. Let's just say they ticked me off a little bit. <laughs> They're just this weird dried thing with seeds inside and it, they do not taste good. I made a tea with them, they don't taste good. They don't look like they should do anything. They don't have a purpose, okay? And that just bothers me. And I couldn't figure out what to do with them. And I'm, in this, I'm dubious as to their ingredient. Do you, do you know how many you're putting in? Yeah, I'm, I'm putting in a quarter cup. Okay. I'm Just checking. You, you weren't sharing that information, so I'm... I'm oh, I thought I said it earlier. It's a quarter cup of rose hips, by the way. And I'm, I'm eyeball eyeballing it because I don't really think it matters. I don't think you're going to taste these at all. So, you know, it's just one of those things. This has nothing to do with why I didn't want to make this recipe, by the way. It's not that I didn't want to make these. It's, I like making my own. I don't like using other people's stuff. I don't want to have to copy someone else. I like We're not copying. We're using it as a jumping off point, obviously. Yeah, and that's how she talked me into doing it. Mm. Actually, like a million people asked us to do these, so we're like, okay, we'll make it. All right. Quarter so cup of rose hips. We got that, that, that. Okay, you can tie the bag. Now I can tie the bag. Yay! <laughs> Trying to not leave a lot of loose anything because I don't want it to float. The whole point in using a bag is to keep everything submerged and in there and contained. We have collected a rather vast selection of brew bags because over they all the years. suck. I don't like brew bags. And so our favorite bag, funny enough, is a nut milk bag. Yeah, just for straining out um, like soy milk and cashew milk and stuff like that. We have two of them. They're both currently in use, so. I have to wash my hand. Now, I say I don't like bags. Um, there's a reason. They make for more mess in the beginning and less mess at the end, but they still make a mess because I still had to get my hands in there and touch everything and get all honey covered. And there's just, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really see the purpose behind them. Do they save a slight amount of loss at the end? Maybe a little bit, okay? Somebody's gonna argue with me and say that they save a ton and they didn't. Okay, everybody has their own experience. In my experience, they're a lot more trouble than they're actually worth. So at this point, we're gonna add more water. Yes. She's just trying to get me to stop ranting. They also hold air, which is usually an issue. And I don't like the fact that they float a lot of the time. That's why we started adding, okay, ooh, that's good. We started adding the weight to them. And I think... Do you wanna use that or do you wanna use this? Yeah, yeah. You're right. So because the bag has such a fine mesh, it can trap gases in there, as you can see, and that's what causes it to float. So if you gently smoosh it, technical term, sometimes the gas releases itself and then it'll sink. And then other times it's just obstinate and it's not gonna play nice. It's like, you know, men's bathing suits that are a little too water <laughs> watertight. They balloon up. I mean, sometimes that's a preferable look, but it's not really what you're after most of the time. Yeah, now he's pushing it against the side, and that seems to be working a lot better. Seems to be doing something. Yeah. Your, your poof is, is lessened. I want no poof. <laughs> this is a no poof brew. Get in there. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Fine. It's great. It, it will actually subside a little bit over time. Okay. I don't need this anymore. Do you, do you mix it enough that we get I, gravity I, reading? I mixed it enough for a gravity reading, yes. Okay. Okay, next I'm going to take a gravity reading. Why do we take gravity readings, Derek? <laughs> we take gravity readings so that way we have an idea of comparison so we know what our brew is doing. Is it fermenting? Is it done? Is it stalled? All these things we can ans answer easier if we have readings along the way. That is by far the majority of reason why you take a reading. The other reason is you know, so you can calculate how much AVV is in there. If you really needed to know such things. I don't know of anybody that says, oh, I can't drink something that's over a certain... I know, she keeps telling me to do this. I don't know people that have like a, ooh, I can't drink something that's above this limit, you just drink less. Or, I can't drink something below this limit, drink more. Okay, we're at 1.096, let me make a note of that. Which is 
within like four points or nine points of the absolute number that it should be for honey. So I'm fine with that. What do I mean by that? Well, in general, one pound of honey in a one gallon must, not and one gallon of water, one pound of honey in a gallon of pre-made must would be about 1.035 gravity. So if we have three pounds, it'd be 1.105 gravity. We're at 1.096 gravity, which means really, really close. So we're a little bit more diluted than that. So now is the time to add our final ingredient. And that ingredient is our yeast. Red Star Premier Classique. And why are we using Red Star Premier Classique? Because I did research on what was the best yeast for fermenting blackberries and somebody said to use this. And I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of the time that's the research that we do on yeast. We look around on the internet, see what other people have done, see what worked best for this, what worked best for that. Also see what works in each environment because we're in a warm environment and we keep our house warm. So our situation is a little bit different than maybe yours might be. So everybody's a little bit different. Your results may vary is basically what I'm getting at. And here we go. Now. Red Star. <laughs> Tin foil packet. Got to get out another tool. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing this. I'm sick of doing it. <laughs> it's annoying. But anyway, now the yeast is open. And dump it in. And as always. Pack your packet. That's right. T-shirts available in our store. I'm not wearing it today. I was going to. So now this particular yeast is a has a 13% tolerance. So we know with the sugars that we have in here, the fermentable sugars that is, that it should have no problem getting pretty dry. Pretty we dry. might end up with just a touch of sweetness on this one, and that's okay too. Um, we wanted to stick close to the original recipe to keep to the spirit of the thing, but uh, still kind of make it our own. And um, I think this actually is going to be a pretty decent mead. I mean, it's you know berries with cinnamon and clove. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think the rose is really going to add much to the flavors. It's such a weak flavor that it's going to get lost in it. My projection for my particular palate is that I'm probably going to want to back sweeten this once, if it does go dry. I believe we will. Generally, when you have fruit in it, you want to, because fruit is by nature sweet. So when fruit isn't sweet, it doesn't taste quite right. And once you start adding spices in there, if it's not, if it doesn't have a little sweetness, they taste astringent and harsh. Yeah. So it's got the double whammy going here. So it, yeah, you're probably right. We're probably gonna end up back sweeting unless it finishes sweet, in which case maybe we won't have to. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm trying to poke that stuff down again. It's yeah. still not really working. Now the, it's the rose hips, they float. Ah, well, yeah, because they, they're hollow, so. As they fill with water, yeah. they, might, uh, they might sink or just sit there, who knows what they're gonna do. But next, lid on. That was very violent. It was very violent. Hey, you know, I'm in that kind of mood. What can I say? Not, no, I'm not in a violent mood. What am I saying? <laughs> the trick to these is crank it on as much as you can because the seal in there is super thin and it can deceive you. You might think that it's not sealed up and not working, but in reality, look at the side. If you see little bubbles, it's working. But now I need an airlock. I really like the airlocks that come with the little Big Mouth bubbler. There's a hole in there that is in plastic. The rubber stopper is just firm enough and hard enough that it holds to it really, really well. And it is just a standard S type airlock. Now this is our airlock. This is their stopper. Okay. So it doesn't come with the airlock. It comes with the stopper though. And it just doesn't come out. It, it makes a good seal. It stays in place. And there's even a little bit of a reservoir in the top here. If it does spill out over the top, even though that's really for their inbuilt, uh, airlock that they have, which I don't feel as comfortable using. I just prefer you to use You can't watch the bubbles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so anyway, what are we going to do with this now? We're going to let it sit. Yeah, so it's been going for, uh, let's see, it was the 5th to the 16th, so it's like 11 days. Okay, so we're coming at, coming up to almost two weeks. Just going to take out the airlock, grab our freshly sanitized Mega Maid, which is also just a big syringe with a piece of plastic tubing on it, graduated cylinder, and hydrometer. These things just came out of Turbos, which is the red bucket of sanitization. It's the red thing behind her right there. It is full of star sand solution mixed according to the manufacturer's suggestions. And all I'm going to do is take a sample out of this. Now there's still the bag and everything in here. I didn't take that out. We, um, I haven't touched it since last you saw on purpose because we like you to see everything as it happens. 
There's some carbonation in here. That's not unusual. That's actually totally normal for fermentation. It should be building up some CO2 along with the ethanol. It does, however, make getting a sample a little bit more tricky. If you make sure when you are depressing your plunger, if you use one of these to keep it upright like Brian is now, that'll make the foam, foam float to the top. So hopefully you can minimize the foam getting into your graduated cylinder. Hopefully. Hopefully. Doesn't always work that way. Are we floating? I have no idea. No. Nope. You're not floating. Did not get a big enough sample. I think I was stuck against the bag. Yeah. And it's a difficulty of taking a sample with the bag still in there is that lots of times if you're, the end of your tube gets pushed up against that bag, it's just gonna not suck. <laughs> it doesn't suck. It doesn't suck, which actually sucks. <laughs> now it's floating. And our show just took a very different turn. <laughs> All right, I am now done with this. And that probably just splashed everywhere. Okay, so this is our first reading. Um, technically, it's our first of the last readings. Our first reading was 1.096, and it is, to me, it's kind of important to get that decimal point in there and use all the digits, because if I just said 1.09, I'm leaving off a digit. If I say 109, that doesn't mean anything. If I say 1096, some of you know what I mean, but not everyone. It gets a little crazy. And I have seen people get 1.096 confused all manner of ways. So it's so much easier to just use all the digits and say the whole thing out. I'm guilty of it myself. I don't always say it that way. But this came out to 1.004. Not too shabby. Let me take a note on that, 1.004. So I'm going to take this sample and pour it right back into, into the fermenter. Hopefully. Well, Do you want me most, to the lid off or? Yeah, we're gonna take the lid off because there's just no way I'm really gonna be able to pour that in there like that. I'll get some of it, but not all of it. Want me to take the lid off? Yeah, I want you to take the lid off. There we go. All right. I loosened it for him. Yeah, that's what it is. She totally did. Okay, while we have the lid open, I'll just take a quick peek as well. The bag is floating above the surface a little bit, which I don't really like, but nothing is dry. Everything's still staying wet. So we're gonna put the lid back, right back on. You wanna make sure that that cap stays wet, um, just because untoward things can happen. You know, we don't want that to, to occur. It does smell kind of nice right now. Lock that in there and put the airlock on. And one thing I want to do is get this a little shaken up. It's not just to degas it slightly. It's also to keep that bag wet, move everything around. If there's anything, la any last fermentation left to go, I want to get that in there. We did use Premier Classique, which is like a 13% yeast on this one. It's probably pretty close to 13%. I can figure that out in just a second. We're hoping to shake up degasses it slightly, which it looks like it is. Oh, yeah. That's gonna help the yeast maybe be a little bit more comfortable in their environment. Nothing really likes to swim around in its own waste product. So if we can get some of those unwanted gases out, all the better. So we started at 1.096. We're at 1.004 times 135 gives us 12.4%. So being that this is a 13% yeast, it's close to its tolerance, it might be finished. And that means it just left a little bit of residual sweetness, and that is okay. The only way we're gonna know for sure if it's finished or not is to wait a week and take another gravity reading. That's the trick. We do have a video on that, but essentially it's take a reading, wait a week, take another reading. If they are the same, you're probably done. If they are different and it's going down, wait another week, take another reading. When those readings come back the same, or you know, within like a point or two, I mean, you don't have to get like super crazy about it. But you want them to be very, very close to the same and you want them to be in the realm of what you expect nor normally done to be. And I actually did a video on that too, but that requires a little bit of math and calculating what your original gravity was versus your final gravity versus your alcohol tolerance level of your yeast. So what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna let it sit. See you in a week.